And it's becoming so more evident that the, that the world was once black that when, when P.E. said fear of a black planet, I said, that's it, right there. <laughs> that's the psychosis. So what I'm saying to you, beloved brothers and sisters, is get your mind out of the <coughs> fact that there's something sitting up in the sky and that that thing is looking down for everything that you do and punishing you, rewarding you, doing all this to say, okay, you can come, no, you can't, no. that's bullshit. It's all one thing. And as that retraction becomes more sophisticated, retracts, the condensation process becomes the infinite potential that you participate in called life. The subway has to translate into being the book of formation and to decipher its meaning we must understand the tree of life. The tree is a symbolic reference to the angles taken by the mind energies of universal intelligence. The ancestors stated that the mind of God is viewed through the lens of third density in ten spheres of intelligence as light. Ten spheres of intelligence as light, which when drawn two-dimensionally is seen as the schematics of a tree bearing ten spheres of intelligence as its fruit. This tree is bearing ten spheres of intelligence as its fruit. Now I'm asking you to work with your, your right brain because we're going to go into the left brain. These ten spheres of intelligence have encoded with them the geometric templates and mathematical properties and formulas to create the forms of third density life forms through the manipulation of light by way of sound. It also reveals the angles taken by thought and the secrets to their manifestation, manipulation, and suppression. To become proficient in the use of this language, we must over and understand that all is mind and that mind and movement become sound, light, geometry, and number. Let me say that again. All is mind. And mind in movement becomes sound, light, geometry, and number. So the universal mind in movement becomes sound, light, geometry, and number. Life on the material realm is an organic crystallization of these factors. It is an interlacing tapestry of etheric fibers of atomic origin consolidated by the above-mentioned phenomena. Of the dynamics of number, the value and property called four is seen as the foundational resonant template for the construction of the rudimentary activities, with the numbers three, six, eight, and twelve acting as the interlacing values and properties delineating the third density envelope of individual perception. Thus six, the number of the cube, and four, the foundation upon which it is built, equals to ten. The ten spheres of intelligence as sound and light, known as Kabbalah, and the spherical ten principles come together. Why is four the foundational number? Because as I will show you here very quickly, the number four is the foundation to everything. Why is that? The number four is the doorway to understanding the ten sephiroth. Why is that? Because one plus two plus three plus four equals ten. Four is the foundation. That's it. When it comes to the material world, it stops right there at that number. It is there that the root, that, that consciousness takes root into the material world. When all of the light and sound vectors begin to interlace and form the quality of the vibration known as four. Four is not a number. It is a consciousness. Numbers, as you know it, does not exist in the abstract as you see it. You use it for counting separate things. But when the Illuminati use it, they use it as they are principal dynamics of thought. These are living entities. Numbers from one to nine are alive. They're alive as properties of life within you. Everything in your body, everything in your mind is coded around a number. And that number from one to nine is where you are trapped at this particular time. You're trapped someplace in between one and two. Some of you elevate to three. Some may cross over into four. But none of us have ever crossed over into eight and nine and ten yet. Because we're still locked down in certain numericals that keep us in a threshold. Now, very quickly, since I don't have much time before the break, 
I'm going to go over what it is that I'm going to put into your mindset and the next time I come back, I will elaborate fully. Please go to the next slide. We spoke of this, first chapter, 12 paragraphs. Next. Yeah, go twice when you get it. The first 17 chapters, we will have to talk about it another time. Next. Notice that the book of formation is not just about what is written in the text, listen carefully, but how the text is constructed and where key points appear in the body of the work. I was going to teach you that, but you know, this is, I told you, it was going to be a 10 hour lecture, but I'm just going to give it to you within the last three. The master teacher begins to formally admonish his student about the importance of the numeral 10 in, four, in the fourth paragraph of the first chapter. Wait a minute now. He tells you about the number 10 that I spoke about in the fourth paragraph of the first chapter. <coughs> this is how the book is written in these codes that you need to decipher. Why is this important? Next. Remember the focus of the teacher is on the fundamental expression of material consciousness as calibrated through the number 10. Thus, chapter 1, paragraph 4, represents the sum total of the numbers 1 through 4, which equals 10. The numbers 1 and 4 represent the elemental progression of sound and light consolidating into the foundational templates of third density light. Next. The number 1 is called you, Yod. The number 2 is called He. The number 3 is called Wa, or Va. And the number 4 is called He, which is what you know as Yud He, Wav He. That is not Jewish. Next. Why is the Axoloth, Axoloth, the abode of emanation? H is Briya, the abode of creation. W is Yisara, what we were speaking about, the abode of formation. H is Ashaya, where you have in the Bible? Isaiah, Isaiah the abode of action. Next. Here you have in the template form everything that each one of the four worlds represents. And I'll leave it for you to look over and we will go over this at another time. It's there on the tape. Next. When you look at the yud he wav he, you're dealing with fire and sight, air and hearing, water and taste, earth and smell. So each one of these are formulas based upon the four elements and the four senses. Your senses are the elemental sentinels. In other words, the elements are conscious as themselves. When they come together in your body, they become conscious of themselves because of the spark of life that you represent. You are now tabulating and, and, and calibrating your world based upon the consciousness of these senses. So they can actually get to you by orchestrating your senses. By messing with your senses, they can lock down your consciousness. Yes. The number 10 represents the 10 Sephiroth, which is known in the arcane sciences as the Tree of Life. It is not this Tree of Life, though it was represented by our Olmec ancestors, our Timoan Khan ancestors, as such. Next. Also, as by the Aztec ancestors, or Mayan ancestors, as well as Olmec ancestors, as such. You see it here. Next. But when we talk about the Tree of Life, this is what we are speaking about. This is a template I want you to become familiar with because I want you to know this and there's a good brother, my good brother, Brother Rashid, who will be teaching on this and is teaching very well on this. I wanted to give you this as a template for you to understand what it's about. You are watching the emanations from what we look at as Kefa, Chakma, Bina. Now, these are the first three of the emanations of the all once it contracts upon itself. I'm going to give you that at another time. Burn this particular template and the angles, all, all of them. There is nothing here that's superficial. Nothing on this particular template is superficial. Every angle has a meaning. Every one. Now notice, you see these angles, right? It's everything that has everything to do with anything in the physical form. 